Hi, this is your host, Open Bharatiya, and we are here at Open Source Summit in Vancouver. And today we have with us Lisa Noble, Distinguished Engineer at Discover Financial Services. Lisa, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you so much for inviting me. Yeah, it's my pleasure to have you here. Uh, first of all, tell us a bit about yourself. What do you do at... And also, I would actually love to know a bit about the company also, because if yeah. I'm not wrong, this is the first time... I've been covering Open Source Summit for a long time, but yeah. this is the first time I think I'm seeing you folks. Yeah. So I have two full questions. First of all, talk okay. about the company yeah. and then your role there. All right. Yeah, so I'm here on behalf of Discover Financial Services, and it is our first time here at the Open Source Conference as a sponsor and as a contributor. Um, we have been a firm believer, believer in open source uh, for many, many years, and we know the value of open source, and we've certainly been consuming open source for a long time, but this is our, our debut in contributing open source and sharing the open source that we are working on uh, with this community. Uh, the thing that's kind of unique about this open source project that we're working on is we are encouraging both uh, developers to contribute, but also for designers. So UX designers, visual designers, um, accessibility designers, you know, any type of designer to get involved in this project. Yeah. I would love to know a bit about, for the for the community, that yeah. you know, Discover Financial Services, what you folks do, and then we'll talk about you know, what are the areas, because you know, you folks are big, uh, you do a lot of open source, you do a lot of proprietary, but I want to understand what you folks do and what are the aspects where you engage with open source. I myself am a distinguished engineer at Discover. Um, that is a new initiative at Discover to introduce the idea of distinguished engineers. It was important them to um, identify distinguished engineers in, in regards to their digital transformation. So Discover's in the midst of a digital transformation, really understanding that they need to be a tech company as well as a financial company in order to move effectively and to scale and respond to customer needs quickly. So um, we're in the middle of that transformation. It's a really exciting time for Discover. And that's really why we are here today um, at Open Source Summit to share you know, our commitment to open source and digital transformation and to share, you know, and collaborate with people and share some of our ideas. And it's not just you folks are in your digital transformation. Your clients are also, you know, in the early stages of digital yeah. transformation. So talk a bit about uh, when you folks are embarking on the journey, what are the challenges yeah. that you saw right. or you, your teams faced where you felt that, hey, open source is the right way because yeah. you don't have, to, there's so much code to be written. There is, yeah. Well, I, you know, first of all, in terms of, you know, all financial companies have to balance innovation and risk together, right? And we don't have to do that alone. Actually, one of the things, one of the initiatives that we have right now, this open source project, we actually paired up with Finos to sponsor a hackathon around the theme builder, which is the open source project that we're doing. Because we recognized, um, you know, as a company, we have certain challenges that other companies and industries can relate to as well. And rather than at trying to champion these changes ourselves, we work better when we collaborate with other people. So, you know, we have to pick and choose the areas where we can innovate fast and quickly and those where we need to take it a little slower. But certainly in regards to making user experiences for our customers more accessible, more consumable, and more customer-centric is definitely one of our goals. Uh, and that's something that, you know, is low risk and is a great place for us to contribute. You mentioned Finos, you know, which is once again you know, yeah. a Linux Foundation project. Uh, talk a bit about your involvement with Linux Foundation. Well, in the past uh, year, we've really started to engage in a lot of crab collaborative communities. Um, so we've been just become very involved in the Linux Foundation and become a sponsor, as well as becoming a sponsor of open source, so of the Open Source Summit. So, you know, this is again sort of our our reckoning or like a revolution for Discover. We're really entering this space of innovation and collaboration, and it's really a transformative time for Discover, so it's a super exciting time. Can you talk about uh, your engagement here? You know, of course, you know, yeah. since you're part of the sponsor, any any sessions that you're, you personally are excited about yeah. that Discover is presenting here? Well, I, for one, am presenting, so I am very excited. Um, I'm presenting on the concept or on the issue of design and open source. Um, and we will also be presenting our uh, debut project, open source project there, which is an integration of design, engineering, and accessibility. 
Um, and we're super excited about this because, as I mentioned, we're not only encouraging engineers to get involved, but we're encouraging end users and designers to get involved in this open source uh, project. And uh, so I'll be talking about um, open source and design in its current state and you know, talk about some of the reasons why we don't see a lot of designers engaging in open source, uh, some of the pain points that are associated with that, and then talk about how beneficial it would be to bring designers into the, op the field of open source. Uh, because there's a, really, there's a lot of magic happens that happens when you intersect design, engineering, and collaboration. And of course, the ultimate platform for collaboration is open source. Can you talk a bit about the importance of design when we talk about code, you know, yeah. the, the end user, you know, UX especially. If yeah. an end user can be a developer, end user can be someone like yeah. me who is leveraging your services yeah. or using your service. So talk about the importance of, you know, UX and yeah. design in general for, you know, and yeah. then we'll talk about open source. Well, UX is incredibly important and impactful, and I think, um, you know, people are beginning to, to understand that more and more. I do want to emphasize, however, that you know, user experiences are things that we as individuals encounter a hundred times a day, right? It's uh, checking into your hotel, ordering a cup of coffee, registering at the conference, right? But more and more of those experiences are becoming digital, right? Um, they don't have to be digital. They don't have to be tied to a user interface to be a user experience, right? And you can apply things like design thinking to investigate how those user experiences are for the end user. Where are the pain points? Where are they having a hard time? Where, where is their space to improve? Um, but more and more, those experiences I mentioned are becoming digital. And when they are digital, they often have a user interface. And then a user interface becomes a very important part of creating an exceptional user experience. Um, so, you know, my passion is that I am both um, an engineer and a designer, so I sort of have that unique perspective from an engineer's point of view as well as from a designer's point of view in creating experiences and digital experiences. And it's so important that we work effectively together in the creation of user experiences. Um, and that's when you see beautiful products come out. It's really when the intersection of design and development are working seamlessly and effectively together. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, as you said, you know, you're an engineer and, you know, yeah. we are seeing a lot of uh, cultural changes happening uh, with yeah. the cloud, which was like DevOps we have, DevSecOps. Yeah. What kind of cultural changes you are seeing in terms of UX and yeah. developers, so that once again, these are not two different silos. Yeah. Well, I think that there's lots of cultural changes going on, and I mean, there can be cultural changes when we talk about uh, ethnicity and, and race and all sorts of things, but also uh, one thing about design that I'm super passionate about is inclusive design, which includes being considerate to people's different um, backgrounds, but also being very aware of people's um, accessibility needs. Um, and this is becoming more and more important to companies as they're creating digital experiences. And so that actually is the focus of the product that we're debuting, the open source project that we're debuting. It is a product that helps teams move from um, you know, design to development to deployment in creating better experiences that are more inclusive. And not just meeting the minimum criteria that's out there, but rethinking what it is to create accessible experiences. When we look at uh, financial services, first of all, as you said, yeah. you are in uh, you know your own stage of digital transformation, yeah. which means you have room for UX development, you know, yeah. you know, kind of rehauling it or yeah. modernizing it. At the same time, you also serve global audience, mm -hmm. which also means once again, we bring, uh, get to the point of, you know, it could be China, it could right. be India, it could be Africa, yep. which means that, and UX is where people interface, yeah. so it should take into account where yeah. they are coming from. Yes, absolutely. So, so let's go back to the same point of, you know, yeah. diversity is not just diversity for the sake of, diversity has a lot of business value as well. Well, I think when you were saying diversity, I think the key in understanding your customers and the broad ranges of your customers really starts with empathy, right? You need to understand your customers, who they are, what their needs are, and how you can better serve them. And as you were mentioning, they could be from anywhere in the world. Their cultural um, you know, habits and things like that may very much affect the way you want to deliver a message, how you want to create an experience. And so that's why I'm so excited that 
discover is in the midst of a digital transformation and they're embracing things like design thinking and really focusing on the end customer and creating the journey. Now, Discover has always done a really great job at identifying the needs of customer service and has been super committed to creating great customer service like when you get on the phone. And now I think Discover has identified we need to do that same thing digitally. And so this is, you know, an incredible time to be a Discover and to be creating these you know, digital experiences that are quite transformative and really are going to be designed to be inclusive for everyone. When we look at UX in general, yeah. and when we look at software and open source, right. open source makes a lot of things easier because yeah. once again, you can collaborate, but oh, it also makes sometimes things difficult also. Yeah, okay. So as you are kind of you know getting into the, what kind of challenges you are seeing when it comes to engaging with the open source community where yeah. you see, hey, you know what, there are a lot of gaps that we still need to fill, or you see they have, yeah. they have taken care of everything. All we have to do is just bring in more value. I guess I can say that there's a couple of areas that I identified that I think, um, you know, it could bring value to open source right now. And and truly, one of the biggest things is that there aren't more designers in open source, right? Um, and there's a reason for that. You know, if you look at the history of open source, open source software, um, um, you know, it, it if you look at the, just like the definition of open source, it says that it's open for everyone for contribution, consumption, for modifying and using how they see fit. And in that definition, it does say anyone. So it... It should be open to, you know, bringing designers into the fold of open source. Um, I think there are some reasons why we don't see more designers in open source, although designers are very are comfortable, very comfortable in collaborative spaces, right? Sort of design thinking is foundational to what we do, and the cornerstone of design thinking is collaboration and trans transparency. Um, and yet you don't see designers in open source, and I think... If you look at open source, there's a couple of reasons. You know, design is definitely, uh, open source is definitely developer-led, and therefore it tends to be about commits, right? Like bug fixes, new features, and engineers are recognized for their contributions. So designers who are interested in collaboration are often not e even aware that open source exists, right? Or that it's a space that they can play in and contribute to. Um, if they do know that it exists, there's a little bit of fear that exists there, right? And for an engineer, you might say, well, what is there to be scared of in regards to open source? But you know, the terminology and the tools are quite intimidating for a designer, just as our terminology and our tools may be, you know, intimidating for an engineer. For example, like words like kerning and the you know golden ratio or white space or skeomorphism are are big words that might intimidate an engineer. Um, and the same can be said for a, a designer who doesn't know what cloning and batching and you know um, stashing and all those things are. And so if we could open the tooling and the technology and the terminology to make designers feel a little bit more included. Um, you also don't see a lot of our design tools incorporated and used in open source. You don't, for example, see things like Figma files being used. Um, so I think if we could bridge some of those gaps and we could identify that design is of great value to open source. Uh, then if people vocalize the need and start bringing designers in the fold, um, I think everyone would reap the benefit. Do you see any trends, uh, Linux Foundation, they folks uh, are involved with, you know, the Hollywood also, they have their whole foundation for, you know, motion picture, you know, academy, you know. Yeah. Uh, but do you see any either projects are there or do you see some kind of movement is happening where, you know, uh, designers are, you know, kind of uh, yeah. moving towards these and we talked about cultural aspect in the beginning as well so it goes yeah. back to the same you know yeah. it used, what kind of either roadback maybe road, uh, roadblock may not be a right word but hurdle do you see any kind of you know hurdles in the for for ux designers yeah. kind of embracing these open source practices or you see yeah things are moving in positive direction slowly yeah i think things are definitely moving in a positive direction you know you you see things like um Figma, for example, is a tool that is foundationally open source because people can create plugins for Figma, which allows you know uh, you know a, a community to collaborate and add, and that's what open source is about. So designers are seeing the value of open source right firsthand, and so I think that it's sort of an awakening. Like UX designers are starting to realize, and all types of designers are starting to see that they there are these opportunities for them to contribute. And I think it's far-reaching beyond um, 
you know, web interfaces. I think you could see it in things like gaming, which we heard about today, um, and all sorts of things. And I also hope that accessibility gets brought into the fold more and more into open source as well, because it is a challenge that we all struggle with. Every company across the globe is having to create digital experiences and take into account accessibility. And yet the complexities are greater and greater and greater. We have desktop, we have laptop, we have tablet, we have, you know, wearables, we have interfaces in our cars and on our fridges, and all of those should be accessible experiences. So it would be much better if we all work together in this effort, because I think we should really reimagine, you know, what we can do for people who have accessibility needs. Excellent. Uh, once again, thank you. Uh, when we do talk about US, it's more like, uh, I may be totally wrong, that you know, a user, as you gave example of refrigerators or cars, is kind of interfacing with the thing. Mm -hmm. So, of course, text is one input, touch is one input, voice yeah. is one input. Yeah. What kind of you know evolution that you're seeing in tech stack where you yeah. see, the, once again, that it's moving more towards accessibility? Well, I think there's so many exciting things that can be done you know, in, in accessibility that even take in consideration things like mobility. For example, let's say you were using your Google Maps and you wanted to know how to get from point A to point B. If it identified that you had accessibility needs, it might give you a path that's easier for you that's not going to get you a point where you have to take stairs to get to your final destination. Or it might suggest a bus route that has, you know, accessibility accommodations to get you, you know, in your wheelchair onto the bus. So I think there's all kinds of things that we can do to elevate accessibility. You know, certainly I think one of the biggest areas of accessibility too that's not being touched is the area of cognitive accessibility needs. Um, there are over a billion people in the world who have accessibility disabilities, uh, but the biggest population of that are people with cognitive disabilities. Uh, I myself am dyslexic. I was identified as being dyslexic when I was in sixth grade, and I'm very grateful for that um, because I was given the tools that I need to be able to, get, you know, get back into the mainstream and contribute to society the best of my capabilities. But I also know that technology can provide such a gift to people with cognitive disabilities. disabilities. Um, you know, for dyslexia, for example, we could render a dyslexic font. We could increase line height. We can increase contrast. And that makes content more consumable for the end user. There's all these things that we can do for people who have mobility sensi motion sensitivity. Um, and like we, there's more and more apps and more and more desktop apps too have a lot of motion in them, which is great, but it can become really overwhelming for users and it can prevent them from actually completing their tasks successfully. So I feel like we can reimagine the way we approach accessibility and customize experiences for people with accessibility needs. Uh, Lisa, thank you so thank much for you taking so time Thank you so much. And I really appreciate you telling me about your interest and your passion. In it no, it was, uh, I was more interested in the learning Learning about you and how yeah. you are bringing your experience. Yeah. Uh, the, the, no, you know, pun on the word, but yeah. to once again improve it for everyone else. Yeah, and exactly. uh, thanks for those insights about diversity is not just about a few things. Yeah. And you know how we should become more accessible. Technology should become more accessible. Absolutely. Uh, that was a great discussion, and I would love to have you okay. back on the show again. Oh, thank you. I so much appreciate your time.